Hello. 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 Very nice to see you all. Uh, we should do it in the right way, shouldn't we? We should say hello to the boys. Hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello to the girls. Hello to the mums. Hello. Hello to the dads. Hello. Hello to the granddads. Hello. <laughs> Hello to the grandmas. Hello. Hello to the great granddads. <laughs> I'm only joking. Hello, my name's Ian, and I'm your storyteller for this evening and it brings me great joy. My heart is pounding right now at the joy of you lot turning up uh, for stories. Have you all heard me telling stories before? Yeah. So you probably know the stories better than I do, do you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hope you're not too chilly. We've been down here all week. We've been living in various spaces. Val's our favourite caravan at the moment. But we've been up in the treehouse and we've been up in the horse box. But it's been lovely to kind of immerse ourselves in the in the trees down here and the chickens we've become particularly fond of the chickens one of them that i've named vera uh, likes a little stroke of a morning she sits outside the caravan and likes a little stroke so if you see her she'll be round there somewhere uh, do say hello from me um, i was just asking my wife joe there where we should start and she said well you've got to start uh, with the one that seems to haunt you there's a particular story that i keep telling and people keep going can you do that one please so I thought I'd start with it. Do you know the story with doing, diggy, doing, diggy, doing in it? You no. don't. Ooh. Oh, well, then you'll like this one. Now, you must excuse me. My little drum here is struggling because she's getting hot and cold and hot and cold. So the skin goes in and out, in and out, in and out. So I'm hoping it won't sound too tinny. Hang on. No, that's fine. So we'll start with this story, if you don't mind. And this is a, a little favourite story of mine. And it was given to me uh, a number of years ago. I got it from a, a man called Peter Chand, who was a storyteller from the Midlands. And uh, it's a funny little story. I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you'll join in. And if you enjoy the story, you can learn it as I tell it, and you can take it home and tell all your friends. And the story goes a little bit like this. Are you ready? Can't hear you. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? Yes! Once upon a time, there was a boy. And that boy owned a drum just like mine. Well, he liked to play his drum in the morning. He liked to play his drum in the afternoon. And he liked to play his drum in the evening. And when he played his drum just like we are right now, people would gather round the fire. And they would dance. And they would sing they would clap and they would laugh and most people in the village where he lived they loved to hear the drum but there was one person or just one that lived there that didn't like that drum at all and that was the boy's horrible auntie now I should probably describe horrible auntie to you if you like just so you can picture what she looked like horrible auntie had one eye open and one eye always shut. Horrible Auntie had a hook nose that was bent down towards the ground and a chin that was coming to meet the nose in the middle. Horrible Auntie had long black hairs coming out of her nostrils. She had an old lady beard that scratched you if she kissed you. And she had broken teeth in her mouth. She walked with a stick and she talked with an old lady voice. Now I shall do my best old lady voice for you. She would say, Hey, 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 hey. If ever I get my hands on that drum, I'm going to break it into a thousand pieces. Well, that's not very nice, is it? Well, the boy didn't want his drum to be broken into a thousand pieces. And so one day he thought to himself, Well, I'd like to practice my drum where Auntie can't hear it. So where should I go? And he thought about it for a little while and then he decided that the perfect place to go and play his drum would be down in the woods because surely her auntie couldn't hear the drum down there. 
And so early one morning he picked up his drum and he set off walking. But the problem was, to get down to the woods, he had to go past Auntie's house, you see. And Auntie, she was an early riser. And she was looking with her one beady eye out of the window and she saw the boy tiptoeing quietly past her house. She saw him and she said, Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> yeah, it made him drunk as well, you see. <laughs> Where are you going with that drum? And the boy said, Auntie, I, I was going to take my drum down to the woods down there and practice it because I know you don't like my drum, you see. So I was going to go down there where it's nice and quiet and you can't hear it. She said, hey, 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 hey. I might only have one eye working, but both my ears are good. I can hear that drum from miles away. So if you want to play your drum where I can't hear it, you'll have to go further than the trees. He said, well, where's that, Auntie? She said, if you want to play the drum where I can't hear it, you'll have to go through the trees and up to the top of the big hill. He said, Auntie, that's a really big hill. She said, yes, but it's not far enough. If you want to play the drum where I can't hear it, you'll go through the trees, up to the top of the hill and down the other side. He said, Auntie, that's miles away. She said, yeah, but it's not far enough. If you want to play the drum where I can't hear it, you'll go through the trees, over the hill, down the other side, and through the big long fields. He said, Auntie, that's going to take me almost all day to get there. She said, yeah, but it's not far enough. If you want to play the drum where I can't hear it, you'll go through the trees, over the hill, down the other side, through the big fields, until you get down to the beach. When you get down to the beach, there's a boat. You climb on that boat and you row 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 until you get to the island. When you get to the island, you climb off the boat, walk halfway across the island, sit yourself down and play to your heart's content. He said, Auntie, that miles upon miles upon miles and it'll take a lifetime to get out there. She said, if you don't want me to break the drum, that's what you'll do. Well, the boy, as you can probably imagine, didn't want his drum to be broken and so he set off on the long journey. He went all the way through the trees, he went over the hill, he went down the other side, he went through the long fields, he got down to the beach, he climbed on the boat, he got hold of the oars and ladies and gentlemen, you'll be pleased to know that this is your first joiny inny moment. Think of it as a little warm-up against the cold. Have you got all your oars? Are you ready? Even the big hairy men at the back can join in. They rode, and he rode, and he rode, and he rode, and he rode, until eventually he got himself all the way out to the island. He walked halfway across the island, he sat himself down, and he started to play his drum. You know, as he was playing his drum, just like we can right now, there were trees on that island, and he could see some of those trees. Can you see them? And luckily, right now, the wind's dropped a little bit, and they're not flying from side to side. But as he looked at those trees, he could see that the branches on the trees were moving, but not just the branches, the whole tree trunks were moving. But as he felt the air, he could sense that there was no wind. So something must have been moving those trees. And as he looked, he thought to himself, well, if it's big enough to move the trunks of those trees, it must be big indeed. And suddenly it appeared. In fact, it was so big, it was so horrible, it was so ferocious that the boy could hardly get the words from his mouth. And he said, Um, ma... Um, uh, um, uh. Are you ready? A monster! <laughs> it had a head the size of a beach ball. It had a nose the size of a pineapple. And coming out of it, one of its nostrils was a long black hair. And when the wind blew, it went... Well, the monster came running towards the boy like it was going to eat him, you see. And the boy thought to himself, oh, my goodness, what am I going to do? Well, my dad always told me, if something horrible is coming towards you, if you make a big loud noise, it'll scare it away. And so the boy picked up his drum and he played his drum. And suddenly the monster stopped in its track and went, Err? so he played his drum again. And the monster said, Err? So he played again. And the monster said, Hey! Dined 
diggy dine, diggy dine, diggy dine. Dine, diggy dine, diggy dine, diggy dine. Dine, diggy dine, diggy dine, diggy dine. Well, as the monster danced, the boy made his escape and he ran and he ran and he ran and he climbed on the boat. Have you got your oars? You can say it with me this time. What did he do? Double time. He rode. And he rode. And he rode. And he rode. And he rode all the way back to the mainland. He went through the green fields. He went over the hill. He went down the other side. He went through the trees and back to the village. And when he got there, Auntie was there. And you know what Auntie said? Hey, 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 hey. Where are you going with that drum? And the boy said, Auntie, I did exactly what you told me to do. And I went all the way through the trees. I went over the hill down the other side. I went through the green field. I went down to the beach. I got on the boat. I rode and I rode and I rode and I rode and I rode to the island. I went halfway across the island. I set myself down just like you said. And I was playing my drum, Auntie, when suddenly out from the trees, there came a monster. She said, a monster. He said, a monster. She said, there's no such thing as monsters. He said, Auntie, I'm telling you, there was a monster on that island. It was horrible. He had a head the size of a... Can you remember? Yeah. And it had a nose the size of a... And it had a long black hair coming out of its nostril. And when the wind blew, what sound did it make? He said it was horrible, Auntie. She said, listen, there is no such thing as monsters. And in fact, to prove there's no such thing as monsters, tomorrow I'll go there with you and I'll show you. He said, Auntie, I'm not going anywhere near that island. She said, oh, yes, you are. In fact, I'm so confident that there's no monster on the island. We'll take the whole family with us. We'll take mums and dads and aunties and uncles and grannies and grandads and all the children, and we'll all go and have a picnic on the island. Well, the next day, Auntie had made the picnic, and she went round the houses, and she knocked on the doors, and she woke up the entire family. And eventually, they all set off. And the boy had his drum under his arm. They went through the village. They went down through the trees. They went over the hill. They went down the other side. They went through the green fields. They went down to the beach. They climbed on the boat. It was a little bit top-heavy. There were so many people on it. But they grabbed the oars. Have you got your oars? Are you ready? And they rowed. And they rowed. And they rowed. And they rowed. And they rowed to the island. They went halfway across the island and they sat themselves down. Well, Auntie got the picnic blanket out. She got the food out. And they all started to eat. But the boy, he held on to his drum. And he thought, if that monster comes, I know exactly how to scare it away. When suddenly, Auntie, she saw the drum and she said, Hey, 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 what are you doing with that drum? And the boy said, well, Auntie, you know, yesterday when the monster came, all I had to do was play, she said, don't you tell me about monsters. There is no such thing as monsters. She said, give me that drum. And she took that drum and she carried it all the way to the tall branches of a tree. Well, she was going to break it later, you see, because she really wanted to enjoy breaking it. So she put it up into the tall branches of a really big, a really big tree. Very tall it was, indeed. And the story's about 15 minutes to the end, so if you could just hold that there, that'd be great. Well, the boy couldn't reach the drum anymore, you see, and he thought, oh, my goodness, I hope the monster didn't arrive. When suddenly he looked off into the trees and he could see that the trees were moving from side to side. And he thought, oh my goodness, it's not the wind that's blowing. It must be coming back when suddenly it appeared. And everybody noticed where the boy was looking and they all took their finger. They all took their finger. <laughs> and they pointed in the direction that the boy was pointing. And I'm sure you remember the words they said. Um. 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 This time. A monster! It had a head the size of a... A nose the size of a... And a long black hair coming out of its nostril. And when the wind blew, what sound did it make? Well, it came running into the space, you see. But the boy didn't have his drum. And so there was nothing to frighten them away. And so the monster started his dinner. He picked up one of the children. Am yum 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 yum. He picked up another child. Am yum 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 yum. He picked up dad. Am yum 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 yum. He picked up mum. Yum 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 yum. And eventually, he even picked up old wrinkly auntie. Am yum 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 yum. Until eventually. The only person there was the boy. 
And the boy looked at the monster, and the monster looked at the boy, and the boy looked at his drum, and the monster looked at his drum, and the boy thought, I'm just going to have to go for it. And so he ran as hard as he could, and he leapt into the air. And thankfully for him, the tree was very kind and passed the drum to him. Thank you. And then he landed just in time, and he played his drum. And the monster stopped in his tracks and said, Eh? So he played again. And the monster said, Eh? So he played again. And the monster said, Eh? Dine, diggy, dine, diggy, dine, diggy, dine. Dine, diggy, dine, diggy, dine, diggy, dine. Dine, diggy, dine, dig. Well, listen. Let me give you a word of warning, okay? If you've ever had a great big meal and your, your belly's bulging just like on Christmas Day, don't immediately break out into excessive exercise <laughs> because it can have a really horrible reaction. So when the boy played his drum the next time and the monster danced, Dine, diggy, dine, diggy, dine, diggy. <laughs> Blah! Out came the children. Dine, diggy, dine, diggy, dine, diggy. until eventually everybody was out of the monster's tummy and the only person left in there was old wrinkly auntie and the boy thought to himself yes I've got rid of her at last come on everybody let's go but dad stopped and said now listen she's your auntie you might not like her but she's family you can't leave her in there you know what to do so the boy played his drum one last time and I would encourage participation at this point if, if anybody wants to join me in a, in a, in a little uh, monster dancey throwy uppy session, that would be absolutely <laughs> fine. Uh, are you ready? The, the, the subject's in that direction over there. Here we go. <laughs> dine diggy, dine diggy, dine diggy. Don't miss now. <laughs> Don't make a mess of the floor. <laughs> this time... <laughs> out came Auntie and they ran and they ran and they ran and they climbed on the boat they got hold of their oars and what did they do they rowed and they rowed and they rowed and they rowed and they rowed back to the mainland they went through the green fields they went over the hill they went down the other side they went through the trees and back to the village and when they got there the boy said Auntie Auntie I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this drum in the cupboard and not play it anymore. And Auntie said, hey, 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 hey. I might not, might not like that drum, but that drum's just saved my life. And I think you should play it as often as you like. And so that evening, the boy played his drum around the fire. And people gathered just like we are right now. And they danced. And they sang. And they clapped until eventually it was time to go to bed. And they were just about to set off from the fire when they had a surprise visitor. Suddenly there at the fireside was old Auntie. And they found something out about Auntie that uh, they never knew before. They found out that evening that Auntie could actually bust some moves. <laughs> she could cut some shapes and, and Auntie had a little word with me just before we started the stories and she said that she would be really happy uh, <laughs> to demonstrate her dancing style isn't that right Auntie <laughs> yeah we all want to see Auntie dance don't we come on Auntie up on your feet here we go let's give her a clap here we go you ready Auntie hey! story yourself because everybody in that village lived happily ever after a round of applause for auntie
Oh, there we go. That's got the party started, hasn't it? <laughs>